right, so using test wisely, 9.3 feet. How large a sample should researchers take when they plan to carry out a significance test? The answer depends on three different factors. You should write these down. The significance level, the effect size, and the desired power of the test. So first of all, write down significance level. This is how much a risk of a type one error. So if my alpha is 5%, I have a 5% chance of making a type 1 error. And again, a type 1 error is rejecting the null hypothesis when the null is actually true. So how much are we willing to accept of a type 1 error? So if it has serious consequences, depending on the study, we might opt for alpha at 1%. Otherwise, we're going to choose 5% or 10%. So recall that using a higher significance level would decrease the type to error probability and increase the power. So effect size is the second thing. And effect size is how large a difference between the null parameter value and the actual parameter value is important for us to detect. So how far off do we want to be from the null with our actual answer? And the last thing is called the power. This is what chance do we want our study to have to detect a difference of the size that we think is important. So here's an example, developing stronger bones. A six month exercise program increases the total body bone mineral content or TBBMC or can a six month exercise program increase the total body bone mineral content of young women. A team of researchers is planning to study and to examine this question. The researchers would like to perform this test. So we have our null hypothesis, the mu, the mean is zero, so there's no real increase, or the alternative hypothesis that there is an increase in bone mineral content. And mean is the true percent change in TBBMC due to the exercise program. So to decide how many subjects to include in their study, so we're trying to figure out what N is, we're gonna look at these three questions. So one, the significance level. And so the researchers decide that alpha can be 5% is gonna give enough protection against declaring that the exercise program increases bone mineral content when it really doesn't. So a type one error. They're gonna go with 5% chance of getting a type one error. Effect size. So this is from zero. They want a mean increase in the bone mineral content of 1% to be uh, important to detect. So I want to know if it's off by 1%. So if I was at zero, at least be off by 1%, I want to detect that as, um, yeah, there's an increase. Okay. And three is the power. The researchers want a probability of at least 90%, this is the power, that a test at the chosen significance level will reject the null hypothesis um, that the mean is zero if the truth is actually one. So this is our chances of getting our alternate as true if we're off by one. So everybody turn to page 590 in your book and we're gonna do this activity online that talks about power and it'll help us to understand. So in this activity, you're gonna use the statistical power applet in the book's website um, to determine what our sample size is gonna be. And based on the results of the previous study, uh, researchers are willing to assume that sigma equals two, so we've got a standard deviation, for the percent change of bone mineral content over the six month period. And we'll start by seeing whether or not 25 subjects are enough. So I'm gonna to go to this website and plug in these values. So we're gonna, we're gonna start with the mean is zero, which we have. And we want our alternate hypothesis to be greater than zero, which we have. And we're gonna change our standard deviation to two. And we're gonna change end to 25, so our sample size. We'll leave our significance level as 5%. And we are going to change our alternate hypothesis to one. So if it's um, our null is zero and the truth is really one, how likely are we to get that, okay? 
And so what is the power? So our power is at about 80% right here. Um, so 80% chance that we get the alternate correct. All right. Um, change the significance level to 1%. So I'm going to change alpha to 1%. What effect does this have on the power of the test to detect that the mean is 1? So this is the truth right here. Our mean is really 1. What's the power of the test? Well, now it's only 57%. So when I had a significance level of 5%, I had a higher power. So when I decrease my significance level, I also decrease my power. Um, so the next part, part three, says the researchers decide that they're willing to risk a 5% chance of making a type 1 error. Change the significance level back to 5%. Okay. Now increase the sample size to 30. What happens to the power? So I'm at 25. I'm going to change my sample size to 30. What happened to my power? It also increased. So if I increase my significance level, my power increases. If I increase my N, my power also increases. So keep increasing the sample size until the power is at 90%. So let's see, I want to get 90%. I'm going to change this N, my sample size to 35. Click update, and we've got our 90%. So if I increase my sample size, I can increase my power. If I increase my alpha, I can increase my power. Um, so number five, would the researchers need a smaller or larger sample size to detect a mean increase of 1.5 in the bone mineral content? So if I change this, so the truth is 1.5, uh, what happens? My power also increases. So notice I moved this number, 0, and 1.5. I have a further distance away, so my power increases. And so I could use a smaller sample size if I wanted to. Wow, a lot smaller. <laughs> All right, down to 15. Uh, and what about a 0.85%? So if I change this to 0.85, so now I'm closer to zero. Now I only have a power of 50% of getting the alternate correct, and so I'm going to have to change my sample size to a larger sample size if I want to get to 90% of power. All right, so let's review and summarize what we learned from that. So you should write this down. If you insist on a smaller significance level, such as 1% instead of 5%, you're going to have to take a larger sample size. Okay. If you insist on a higher power, like you want a 99% chance that you're going to get it right, uh, rather than 90, you will need a larger sample. Any or At any significance level and desired power, detecting a small difference between the null and alternative parameter values requires a larger sample than detecting a larger difference. So that was the last thing, that's the effect size. When we're changing that alternate parameter, um, the further away we get from zero or whatever our null is, um, the harder it is to have the power that we want, so you're gonna have to increase your sample size. So another thing, sometimes they ask, what are ways that we can increase our power? If you wanna increase power, you can increase the significance level, and you can also increase the sample size. All right, so another side note, sometimes it's not even practical and it doesn't even really matter when we find a difference. So you kind of want to think about what statistical significance means in and also practical importance. So when a null hypothesis, where that's no effect or no difference, so if it's zero, can re be rejected at the usual levels, 1% or 5%, there is convincing evidence of a difference. But that difference may be very small. So when large samples are available, even tiny deviations from null hypotheses will be significant. And so just think about in the context of the problem if it really means that it's important. So here's an example. Suppose we're testing a new antibacterial cream formulation NS on a small cut made from the inner forearm. 
We know from previous research that with no medication, the mean healing time, defined as the time for the scab to fall off, is 7.6 days. The claim we made, or we want to test here, is that formulation NS speeds healing. We will use 5% significance level. So the procedure, we're going to cut a random sample of 250 college students, and we're going to apply formulation NS to the wound. The mean healing time was 7.5 days for our sample, and the standard deviation was 0.9 days. So we're going to test the claim that this uh, null hypothesis is 7.6, or that if we use formulation MH, that it's less than 7.6 days. So we do an examination of the data. There's no outliers or no strong skewness, so the conditions for performing the one sample skew test are met. We carry out the test, we get a p-score, we get a p-value, we have our degrees of freedom, and because our p-value is less than alpha, we reject an all, and we have convincing evidence in favor of the alternative hypothesis that it's less than 7.6 uh, days. However, the result is not practically important. So having your scab fall off one-tenth of a day sooner is really not that big of a deal. So just think through the problem. Um, so statistical significance is not the same thing as practical importance. And the remedy for attaching too much importance to statistical significance is to pay attention to the actual data as well as to the p-value. So plot your data and examine them carefully. Are there outliers or other departments or departures from a consistent pattern?